Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, uh, in the last lecture, we have discussed uh, Christian religion uh, as to how it is sort of blamed and then seen to be uh, responsible for the kind of ecological crisis which we are facing now, uh, strongly argued by uh, historian Lynn White. And also, uh, we have discussed how uh, the Buddhist principle of conservation of animals and plants were strongly seen in the uh, script or the holy book of uh, Buddhism. Now today uh, we like to we will be looking at how uh, Hindu religion in in Hindu religion in a way uh, tries to uh, look at the kind of uh, conservation of uh, not just the nature but also how. It, it, it encoded certain kind of principles which are being enshrined in the holy book of uh, Hinduism. And we will move on to uh, the Christian religions in a way how they try to relook and uh, perhaps try to sort of uh, reposition themselves in the context of the environmental crisis and uh, we will be citing a uh, few examples like the Bisnoi community and also the Chipko movement which was perhaps the first environmental movement in India. Now moving on, uh, the how do we situate religion and how is religion able to sort of uh, create some kind of awareness in human which is uh, sort of different from the scientific or technological reasoning. Normally, uh, we have uh, over and over again discussed uh, in the lectures, uh, in my previous lectures that how science and technology, the combination of these two is seen to be pretty much lethal and then uh, which in a way has posed a serious threat to the perception or in terms of exploitation of natural resources. Now, this for quite some time this uh, science and technology is seen to be uh, liberating enough and this which, which, which are based on scientific region is in a way not adequate enough for us to we solve the kind of problems which we have now. Therefore, as the theme of this particular series of lecture, uh, since the last lecture, we have been trying to look at how uh, one positions or one one positions oneself in the context of religion and how the belief, in a way, has change the kind of mindset and their attitudes towards the resources. And, and, and in this, uh, we are trying to look at how religion also help tries to uh, in, in, in making human beings uh, sort of uh, the kind of attitude or the control over the animate and the inanimate world. and. Uh, our action in a way is also like for instance the arrogance and uh, the kind of dominant power or dominating power over nature in a way can have a certain kind of reaction or a backfire. So, in, in, in a simple sense 
the kind of actions and behaviors which we tend to show towards the animate and inanimate world will eventually backfire and perhaps that is the stage which we are in a way witnessing and, and for instance the carbon emissions so and so forth which is pretty much highlighted uh, when we discuss about the climate change is also to be uh, contextualized and understand uh, by bringing in the human uh, everyday or way of life. Now, uh, why, how can religion in a way provide uh, sort of uh, in, in coping or in understanding uh, these problems better? Religion in a way can provide at least three uh, fundamental mainstays mainstays to help uh, human beings cope uh, with the in, in a technological society and the first and foremost is it, it tries to defend the individual's existence against the depersonalizing effects of the techno industrial process. Now when we talk about depersonalizing we are again trying to in a way uh, sort of uh, distance ourselves from the surroundings which we have as a process of this techno industrial or the with the help of technology and industry. Now, the second is uh, it, it forces the individuals to recognize human fallibility and to combine realism with ideology. Now, humans in a way uh, which, which perhaps is uh, presumed to be equipped with uh, so much of knowledge which, which are guided by reasoning and uh, empirical facts or empirical reality uh, in a way should be combined with idealism or sort of the uh, I, uh, I not only the ideas but also the beliefs what's what an individual has. So, therefore, only in that sense uh, we will be able to realize that uh, human in a way is fully built and also the kind of uh, problems which we created in a way is uh, enormous and it can in a way fire back. Now, thirdly, while technology in a way gives the individual the physical to create or to destroy the world, religion in a, on the other hand gives a moral strength to grow in virtue by nurturing restraint, humility and liberation from self-centeredness. So, this idea of uh, feeling of self-centeredness which is embedded with selfishness, greediness and uh, the desire for accumulation of wealth. All this in a way uh, is again not really denounced, but religion in a way can subside by creating sort of inculcating rather the moral ethics and values in an individual. Now, over a period of time, if you look at uh, since the post industrial period and then with the rise of capitalism and so on and so forth, human have become more or less mechanized and we have in a way uh, become a subservient of the machine which we all uh, initially have created. Now, we, 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 we tend to be you know uh, guided by the dictates of this uh, machines and the question sometimes arises does human make machines or machines makes human rather. So, that sort of ideas uh, are in a way governing the everyday life. Now, uh, if you have time you can perhaps browse in the YouTube 
on the short movie by Charlie Chaplin uh, called The Modern Times. So over there you will tend to witness how humans uh, have sort of become enslaved by machines and the kind of uh, routine people follow in terms of sort of uh, manufacturing and uh, producing certain kinds of products has eventually taken away uh, the self of an individual. And uh, in this context, we can also recall about Marx's uh, understanding of uh, the materialistic products and wherein he strongly talks about alienation, how a labor in a way constrains uh, from the final product what he produces. Now, uh, moving on, we seldom tends to uh, question or tends to uh, look at the inner desire and inner meanings of human life, because we are so much focused for with, with the external and the material aspects of life. Therefore, religion is uh, sort of an alternative way or it could be uh, perhaps a solution to the problems which we are encountering. Now, if you look at this, uh, the idea of this divine being as the one which has in a way an underlying power of uh, unity is uh, perhaps uh, beautifully uh, espoused in the book of this what we call Yajur Veda. Now, in this I quote, uh, it, it says that the loving sage beholds that being hidden in mystery, wherein the universe comes to have uh, one home, therein unites and therefrom emanates the whole. The omnipresence, omnipresent one uh, pervades souls and matter like uh, verb and woof in created beings. Now, this in a way shows the kind of uh, wholesomeness and holistic of how an individual has become part of whole. Now, uh, if we can recall uh, Herbert Spencer, who is well known for his uh, organismic theory of uh, society, in a way sees or emphasizes that an individual is compared to the organs of a body and these organs put together becomes a single body. So, in a way uh, we as an individual or are put together and which, which in a way tends to you know uh, struggle and work for the whole. So, therefore, the idea of this unity rather than being divided or being scattered is uh, pretty much strongly emphasized in this uh, book of this Yajur Veda. And, and, and this eventually has also strongly propagated about this the sanctity of life. Now, uh, nextly in the, the book of this Atharva Veda, uh, the art is not uh, created for human beings alone, but for other creatures as well. So, again uh, we sometimes tends to be guided by this anthropocentric ideas that uh, we humans are uh, as if we are given inalienable rights to you know control and dominate the uh, species which are around us. And, uh, we human beings are the rightful owner or who have that authority to in a way control or uh, things which are around in this universe. Now, Atharva Veda has in a way a different opinion in this context and uh, which uh, talks about how uh, where I quote born of the uh, on this move mortal creatures, but thou bearest them, which means uh, talks about 
venerate about the uh, creator that it created. And bife and quad group, thine O art, are the five races of man for whom the Surya, that is the sun, as he rises, spreads with his rays the light that is immortal. Now, uh, if you take it this way, if we feel that we human beings alone uh, in a way can survive, that could perhaps be the uh, stupidest and uh, uh, blunder we are going to create. And then we should sometime reckon and then try to uh, retrospect or rather engage in self introspections and think about things around us. For example, the sun, the planetary system and so on and so forth. How without this it is impossible for us to you know even exist. Now therefore, it is important to uh, sort of uh, realize the importance of not only these creatures also, but the particularly the creator who in a way has so much of with so much of effort tends to create all this and then uh, in a way has uh, make a life in a much more uh, a harmonious way. Now, if you look at some of the early texts of this uh, uh, Sanskrit, that is the Veda Upanishads, they strongly uh, talks about the non-dualism of the supreme power that existed before the creation. Now, when we talk about dualism, we, we tend to sort of negate and differences uh, different uh, the create the differences between human and nature. Now, therefore, uh, even in the early text of the Sanskrit, it talks about the non-dualism of the supreme power that existed before the creation. So, as we had discussed, it, it, it strongly tries to propagate or espouse the, holi the wholesomeness, the unity wherein every creature occupies a very important place and, uh, uh, and, and every creature in that sense has the rightful, uh, uh, rightful to existence. Now, God in a way as the efficient cause and the nature that is the prakriti as the material cause of the universe are unconditionally accepted as their harmonious relationship. Now, the question is how do we establish a harmonious relationship? Can we afford to you know uh, maintain a harmonious relationship or cordial relationship with our surroundings by sort of uh, utilizing our uh, scientific and technological reason? or should there be other ways on alternative ways. Therefore, in this context it is important to realize how uh, and who has actually created uh, the nature and then the, who is in a way responsible for creating the material aspects in this universe and which in a way has uh, sort of uh, unconditionally accepted uh, this harmonious relationship. Now, again, the, in the book of uh, Gita, if you look at uh, the Lord Krishna, in a way, says to Arjuna that of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, uh, no for certain that I am both its origin and dissolution. Now, this, this in a way has uh, rightly pointed out uh, who owns and then who is responsible for this creation of this the material cause in the universe. Now, uh, since it is clearly depicted in this book uh, that 
uh, as the Hindu religion believes that Lord Krishna in a way has uh, overriding power over the material as well as the spiritual world and uh, he has that power of uh, creating at the same time has the power to dissolve or the dissolution which means he can destroy and create at his own uh, wish. And uh, your father says again that the whole cosmic order uh, is under me. By my will is manifested again and again and by my will it is annihilated at the end. Now, uh, to put it in a very simple way, if you look at the journey of the right deep passage of uh, a human life, how we were created in the womb and uh, from the cradle to the journey from the cradle to the tomb, you can see the enormous amount of struggles we human have actually witnessed and encountered and uh, we ourselves keep pretty much busy with uh, you know like uh, uh, educating ourselves at the same time searching for certain, certain kinds of ancient reasoning and we, we tend to be guided by certain kind of rational behavior. But ultimately when we die, we take nothing because everything is where it is. So, in one sense, no matter how we try to, you know, like uh, through the use of certain kind of authority and power, we tend to dominate and control. But ultimately, we submit in a very humble manner and then leave everything to the one who actually have created. Now, in some way, we can link up with the kind of uh, the human life cycle, how we were being created and then how we are being in a way destroyed and uh, <coughs> ultimately end up. So, therefore, we were created and then we go back to the one who has in a way created us. Now, thus if you look at the, the ancient text of uh, the Hindus, both God and Prakriti that is the nature was to be one and the same. So, if we are to equate or uh, try to look at how uh, nature that is Prakriti and God is to be seen as the same, uh, could, be, could we be able to you know uh, exploit and then harm the nature then. Now, harming the nature in a way uh, is also to be equated with harming the creator that is the God. Now, that is uh, one of the moral questions which are to be in a way uh, situate and then to look at. Now, if you look at uh, some of the doctrine of Ahimsa that is non-violence. Uh, and uh, when you talk about Ahimsa, I am pretty sure that uh, you are pretty much familiar with it because uh, the father of the nation that uh, Mahatma Gandhi has used it as a strong weapon uh, during the freedom struggle against the uh, Britishes. Now, this particular doctrine of Ahimsa that or non-violence uh, is in a way borrowed from some of the uh, religious texts of non-violence in a way is not to be located only in terms of a human abstaining from harming others, but also in terms of our uh, treatment and uh, how the nature is. Uh, why is it important to himself? sort of uh, uh, now what happens in this context that is 
the birth and rebirth. Uh, is believed to sometime or abort gives the species not only respect but also the I don't know much about uh, but as far as my understanding goes with his good deeds and then if he is a good person Uh, the chances are there that he might have uh, a high character or which is or maybe if somebody is not is in being a very uh, and then being wicked the chances are there that of You can cite an example about a dong. Uh, it is important to situate the animals and birds not to be seen as uh, 